YouTube episode 15, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I, I, yep. Slap the sausages together. That's how you know the episode started. I'm going to tell you what I just told Jesse off air. Oh, God. I, the more we've done this, I hate YouTube more and more each week. I see so much crap on YouTube in this card space that yeah. people watch. I'm just going to tell you, we're going to end the show. Yeah. With pick a vein. <laughs> nope. Hang on now. Let's <laughs> we start. We're gonna re beep. No, nope, we're good. Up. And here's to your show. Start the show. We got Ryan in Michigan. Let's go check it out. I liked my start better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Guys, we are in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now my 18th state. Why is there snow on the ground? 18 show. states. It's chilly this outside. It. 13 degrees. So I'm gonna keep it short. <laughs> Today we're gonna be visiting a card <laughs> shop show. Legends Card Shop is hosting a card show within. Now, usually these are really small. I went to one in Jacksonville once. There's only 10 dealers. I do hate YouTube. But this YouTube. was advertised <laughs> as about 30 to Thank 40. Okay. Super excited because I also saw this Take on YouTube and it looked like a Gonna decent hold. show. Let's see how we do. Ooh, the music going. Yeah. Hey, how does he do? He wasn't holding the camera. You have a lot to learn. <laughs> I'm gonna go around and ask a few different dealers what they have been selling the most so far at the show. You lose that so coat. My $2 boxes have been selling oh, super well lately. Um, they really always move at these shows. This kid looks like the kid who punched me in the face in the seventh grade. With the Josh people Boone. that have been selling there, in my Josh. showcases have you. been, of course, John ja Morant. LeBron's been asked about a lot, Curry, all those guys, and um, Trey Young has been doing pretty well today. So mainly just the main guys and um, like uh, Ja, uh, he's just been tearing it up. So those are the Dude, guys the cheap that really boxes well always do well. Yeah. All right, guys. So another kid. The cards that dealers have been what kind of buying is this? and selling. I've been. Hey, we're talking I've seen over here. A lot of Ja <laughs> selling. More Ja. Um, a lot of Miguel Cabrera moving. Miggy. Oh, they're in Michigan. I was gonna say, who's buying Miggy People stuff? People have been looking for Cade as well and asking for him. That's oh, right. So yep. far, I've been Can't moving no mostly no, stuff yeah. out of my 50 cent, one dollar boxes. It's almost Man. all football, Every time. basketball. Every time. Actually, a lot of soccer stars. So guys like LeBron, Curry, Messi, uh, shirt Neymar. Set. A bunch of those names have been moving really, really well. And then a lot of like hot rookies that guys are prospecting on. And then some of the local guys from Michigan, so, like Killian Hayes. Like the <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't say that. I know we don't care. So I went a little value box hunting, and I found a 1954 Ted Williams as an SGC2. So I picked up this Orange whole background. lot for the sticker Show me that price card. on the Ted Williams, which was 225 Check it out now. Ted looks like he's 60 in this photo. Yeah, see the orange background? He does. He's like 35 in that photo. What? Looks like he's 70. I just assumed all baseball players back then were like playing in their 60s. They Ted, all look old. If Ted was alive today, he'd So I just picked up this huge vintage lot for $430. Oh, There's some really cool pieces in here. I wanted to highlight the 1975 minis. Some people know that like Tops does Tops on the Band for mini cards today. But they were first released in 1975 as a regional Mike release. Like Schmidt, Robin Young. Now the two cards again, that uh, set George are Brett. Now, and George Brett. Brett. All Namers were also really good, and it's Stone plentiful Stone. because you're talking about the 1970s. But I picked up a few of them in here, and I'm about to show you them now. A little Pete Rose action. Those are not 75s. Yeah, they are. Oh, there's your grip. The 75s a cool set. Bob Gibson. You know him. Thurman, oh. RIP. Plain accident. Pete Rose, there he is. Plane crash. No oh, more bargain boxing. I got this lot for ten dollars. Oh. Okay. And we've lost Jesse's attention. Hello. Okay, that sounds weird, but I just love it's wrestling okay. cards, like the original. Value box hunting. I picked up this huge lot for one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, he's buying a lot. That's cool. I think you make the most money in those boxes. That's why everybody does it. Honestly, yeah. That's how I got those Tracy McGrady's for 15 bucks. Another bargain haul. Got this huge lot of cards, a lot of baseball and basketball for $60. We need a sponsor for this kid. Somebody should be paying for this stuff. I mean... Not a joke. Of the 12 people who watch, somebody should sponsor this. <laughs> Ryan actually does a good job. No, he does a great job. I think he's actually increased more in view hard viewers show than we have. Thoughts. The first thing that I noticed <laughs> here is all the dealers wanted to use Venmo instead of... PayPal. So oh, yeah. usually when Taxes. I go to shows, everyone defaults to Why? using PayPal as a form of taking payments. Here it was Venmo, and I talked to a lot of dealers. This would even happen way before the IRS rules applied. So just know that if you are going to a show in Michigan, 
Next, so many value boxes. I feel like almost every table here had a value box next to their display case. So you can mix and match those type of cards and find some really, really good deals. Walking across the show, you can also buy cards from the shop and also the dealers, probably about 40 dealers in general. So it was a bad quite show. a few for actually being Small a shows card are the best. shop. You will never really convince me otherwise. I, I spent the most money in right, time. Guys, it's about 3.15 a.m. here in Orlando. I'm absolutely exhausted. You got stuck. plane landed here a few hours ago, but there was an issue at the Orlando airport. Not sure what it was, and we were stuck on the runway for two and a half hours, three hours, something like that. You start screaming. Poor Bob. being stuck crammed on that plane for that long. I'll tell you right I'll, now. You I'd rather be arrested than pulled off. Next weekend, I'm going back to the Oldsmar flea market where I first Baltimore started actually. getting okay. into the cards. This is kind of like my LCS as a kid here oh, hosting cool. a card show. We on the show live next week. after that, it's going to be a down big to, uh, after Baltimore, show in Cleveland, which I'm super excited about Zoom. because there's not going to be one oh. modern card okay, that's also show. Option. See you guys in those videos. <laughs> we'll see you soon, right? I'm telling you right now, you ever kept me on a plane at 3 in the morning, I would be on the no-fly list by the end of that night. There's not a force in this world that's keeping me on a plane at 3.15 in the morning. Not a oh single God. Philly cheesesteak, burrito, Are you okay? calzone. What's the deal, Ryan? We get it. There's cards. Oh What's boy. the food like? Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. I was going to say, nice job <laughs> on the personal stuff I liked. Um, that was cool. All okay. right. That means Ryan's out, and you know what's in? Capital Nonsense. certain type of Olympics <laughs> clapping. Which? Like you just, you do good. Okay, so that's, we went with that name. Stephen Dunbar came up with the name. He's our winner from life. I like Capital Nonsense. By Panini. By Panini, yeah. And you want to try it again? You want to do your clap again? Clown? Okay, so this week, they actually, Panini sent us some new stuff. I've been out of town all week. I just got in yesterday. I did not get a chance to pick it up. We have some contenders. We have a couple other things, but Ooh, for this I didn't week. Know we had some contenders. Nor will you ever know about it. <laughs> 21, 22, Elite Elite and Don Russ, I have traditionally hated. We've actually done really well with all this stuff this year. So I'm going to rip this open. We'll do the same thing. Quick update, too. So last week, we did our mosaic basketball box. Mm -hmm. uh, we sold the whole lot, all the cheap crap. We got rid of everything in one lot after shipping and fees. It was 66 bucks. We have updated that. I still have to take those cards to Nash cards this week, along with anything in here. Yes. We'll then add in the grading fees. We'll kind of let you know where we stand when we get those back. But yeah, this is going to be the cycle every week, like kind of a ripped one. So I'm going to open these up. Yep. You're going to. I'm going to pull. Give up. me the knife back. I'm not going to come. Okay. Myself. You got to be careful. <laughs> um, while he's doing that, Mute my mic. I think it's safe to say that we are under to this point. That's okay. Careful there. Um, we are going to do a giveaway this week for NFTs. Uh, if you guys had not seen the NFT packs, the NFL Prism packs that just released, they are new uh, as far as how they did them. They are now including all variations, not just r not just base, but you can get parallels. You can get all kinds of stuff in there. Um, so if you want a chance to win, we are going to open a pack now. We're going to give away the entire pack to one winner. Just drop your blockchain panini id in the comments and while mike is doing that i'm gonna open this and then maybe i'll do a dance i don't know it depends on my mood all right here we go oh i want to feel i want to hear the noise five cards there are five cards in total oh man we have a rare i didn't pull a rare at all the other day Okay, that one's saved. That's saved for last. Here we go. First card. Okay. That guy. <laughs> that, okay, someone gave me a lot of, gave me a hard time for not being able to pronounce some of these names. Can you pronounce all the names, Mike? Okay, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute Mike. Hey, to the guy who gave Jesse a hard time about names, jump off a cliff. Oh, mute me. Okay. Well, that's nice. I appreciate being in my corner, but let's not uh, uh, you know, encourage that kind of behavior. AJ Brown, though. That's my boy, AJ Brown, Tennessee Titans. Not bad, not bad. Out of six thousand, so you know, high a lot of them, but he's gonna be good this year. Daniel Hunter. Danielle. Is that pronounced Danielle? It's spelled Danielle. We're not gonna worry about it. Go to Jason. Ask Jason what he thinks. Jason, Jason, how do you pronounce Daniel? Is it Danielle or Daniel? Um, Plaxico Burris, also a player. I'm here. That guy shot himself in the foot in a club once and then had to go to jail for two years for having an <laughs> unregistered firearm. No joke. After he beat my undefeated Patriots in the 07 Super Bowl. And it's out of 3250, so that's probably valuable. 
especially you got him to sign it with it's his gun nothing. hand. All right, and lastly, <laughs> but not leastly, are you done opening packs? I'll just, I'll leave you unmuted. Okay, right. hey, hang on. Get, this is the rare. We have to make this interesting. What team is this rare card from? Oh, I guess. I already know it's Mac Jones from the Patriots. All right, you'll take the Pats. Yep. Whoever's closest based on division and conference, loser buys lunch. You're going to have to tell me and not lie to me. Don't which worry one about that. I'm okay. going to go. I'll go complete opposite then. Cardinals. NFC West against AFC East. Woo! Kyler Murray. Here go. we go. Devontae Adams. He's NFC, so I win. Well, Out of fine. 149, though, that's, that's actually... A, that's a draw. No one cares. I mean, no one. No one's having to buy lunch. Yeah. I, it would but, have been you, but I feel bad. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Can, that's I want to know card. what that's worth. Um, We can see if there's any sales of it, but guess what? It's going to be one of y'all's. Just go ahead and drop your blockchain Unless it's ID. worth a lot. Then we'll just keep it. <laughs> Who cares? Um, trying to blow this station up anyway. No, we are not, Mike. Oh, We're having a fun bad. time. Okay, All so right. good with that. So back to the Elite. So this box, 375 retail. Realistically, I could have bought this for 350. So Jesse's going to update the sheet. I'm going to kind of sift through. We'll do our cute little thing where we like update it as we go. We'll look up some cards. We're going to fast forward through most of it. We'll stop at the big hits. Mm -hmm. Hit the B-roll. Do the B-roll dance. I hit my mic. Janice. It's probably a $2 card. It's fine. Okay. Upside down. Goon rookie. Again, couple bucks. Okay. We're doing it. Julius Randall Clarity insert. If that was a big name, that'd be worth some. It's numbered one out of 10. We'll actually look that one up. I'm kind of curious, but it's Julius Randall. Okay. Back to B roll, baby. Harrison Barnes, blue out of 99. Whatever. A couple bucks. Oh, what? Okay, that's some coin. Ayo's a stud. He is selling crazy high right now. We pulled his autograph out of Don Russ the other day in the free box we uh -huh. did. It was worth uh, like 350 360 Whoa. I'm going to have you go ahead and look that up. That one actually looks... Here's a tough thing with Elite. I don't think in general Elite grades all that well. Yeah, like there's a tiny bit of white, so I don't think that'll 10. I bet that auto's worth some money. Rookie yearbook, Ayo. Very that, nice. That's going to be some coin. Yep, and heading to the playoffs. I'm back to B-roll, baby. Julius Randall. Giannis. Giannis. I'm just going to say that every card now. <laughs> um, I don't see one of these Julius Randalls being sold as of yet for the elite. Tim Duncan. All right, first numbered rookie, James Onight. Yeah. We actually I'm pulled not familiar with him. We pulled the Evan Mobley of this card. That's out of 210. The Evan Mobley's worth a couple hundred dollars. It's going to SGC. That one's probably worth two dollars. <laughs> Spellbound Jama Rant. Out of 49, Zach Levine. Again, a couple bucks, nothing yeah. crazy. All right, second auto. Rookie auto out of 149. I wish this was the AO. That is Greg Brown, the one, two, three. Greg Brown, the third rookie auto out of 149. You can look that up if you'd like. I'm going to guess it's not worth much. Okay, so here we are at the end of it. The Greg Brown, did you look up? Yep. Couple bucks. 20. Okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, we obviously got a bunch of inserts, you got a bunch of numbered stuff. Um, the Spellbound. I mean, some cool-looking inserts. I do like that fact about Elite, that there are some nice-looking inserts. Value-wise, again, we said this box is about 350 We got crushed. Here's the tough thing, too. <laughs> With Elite, you're not going to grade it, like I said, in general. Yeah. So, honestly, I'm probably just going to... We'll individually look up the inserts. I'm probably going to put all the inserts up for just dirt cheap. I mean, if we can pull... 25 to 30 bucks there. Or maybe we throw that with the with the brown rookie auto. I'm going to guess maybe 50 bucks, which means we're 300 into the rest of it. AO, Jesse looked up. What about 120 bucks? Mm -hmm. Again, not grade worthy. It's not going to gem. So for the price, it's not worth it. So let's call it 100 after everything. Again, these are just rough. We'll actually update with the rest of it. Now we're into the box for 200 bucks. Julius Randall number to 10 is not going to get us there. Although I wouldn't be shocked if that sold. Honestly, people get weird with stuff number to 10. I don't know. Anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks, I would think. 
I, we got crushed. Here's the tough thing about Elite. Although you get better stuff in general, like you get a couple autos and mm-hmm. num- numbered rookies, because grading's super tough with the surfaces and edges, if you don't, you, you know that day, yes, I did well or no, I didn't. Okay. On this one, we got hammered. So we'll update that. We'll keep a running total of where we're at because at this point, uh, before we did this, we were at a negative 334. But we have but the DeMar and the Maxi at SGC. So we're waiting on those to come back. Yeah. At this point, that just dropped us down to negative 683 and or 684. So, but we got know, a few hundred dollars coming back. This is a back. realistic. Yeah, I look think we're going to side hustle. That I, th- I think we'll be within a few hundred dollars though when we sell this stuff and we sell the stuff coming back from SGC. Okay. There you go. That cool. is your capital nonsense by Panini. Uh, we'll do it again next week with another box. I'm excited to see what we do. Boom, roasted. All right, let's finish this thing up. All right. Well, I think that's time for. Golden Hour. Take that away from me again. After that box, take it away from me. <laughs> All right, let's play Golden. Guys, welcome to Golden Hour. And we are joined God. by what some would say an industry expert. Others would call you a uh, master of content for Golden. <laughs> and we, we're still working on the title. Uh, Susan, go ahead and don't make me pronounce your last name and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sue. People in the hobby know me as Suze, Susan LaJudai. Um, I've been working in this industry for 10 years. I worked at Beckett and I worked at Tops, and now I'm at Golda. Very cool. Very wait. So you've been doing this for 10 years. Are you a collector yourself? I've been a collector for a very, very, very long time. Oh, nice. Really? So what's your PC? What are you, what's your, who do you chase? Um, Derek Jeter is my biggest oh, okay. PC in New York. <laughs> How about a better name? Are you from New York? <laughs> yeah, I was born in the Bronx. I'm from New York. I grew up in Yonkers. That's, yes. a, shame. That's a shame. Go Bronx Pete's. I don't know. I don't know anything in the Bronx. I wouldn't be supportive. So Yankees fan <laughs> just through and through? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, Suze, right. thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's been great <laughs> having you here. I wish we knew that pre-interview. I would have come up with some jokes. That's okay. That's all right. Um, so I Suze, was born in Boston, by the way. It's the only reason for the animosity. It's not personal. I just hate people from that state. Not you in particular, though. No, you're a delight. Um, Suze, <laughs> question for you, being um, one of the head content people there, you have an idea for what's coming up. We already talked about off-air. You, you can't give any details that aren't already in the press. However, we know from many of our guys reaching out that they have had cards that were once decently valued that are now blown up in value over the last year to two years with the the huge spike in the card market. If someone had something that they wanted to get onto your platform, what are the steps? How does someone go about doing that? The easiest way is to go to our website and golden.co golden.co mm-hmm. and hit the sell tab and on the sell tab there's a form you can fill out with all your information pictures of your cards and then as soon as you hit send it goes to our consignment team who somebody will be in touch with you in less than 24 hours um, that's the easiest way you can also email at sell at golden.co um, or hey, honestly like hit up one of our consignment directors on social media like they all have Instagram pages oh. and you could and you could get all their Instagram handles on our website as well on the like about page. Can I ask you a question that I did not prep you for? Why why go to Golden? Um, you know, so, so I somebody who has been in the hobby for a long time what was always fascinating to me was the kind of attention Ken Golden always received for his auctions, mm. right? So you know, as somebody who was like really a bystander as far as like this side of the hobby world was, his, the auctions on Golden were always getting attention in the media, right? I think Ken is like, honestly, he's like the king of PR and he's so good at that. And for me, if I want to sell something and I wanted to go for like lots of money, and yes, I work for Golden now, but that's one of the reasons is because you know that people are paying attention always. Mm -hmm. Like there's, this isn't like, oh, there just happens to be an auction that I ran into and like, cool, I got this stuff. But when, when Golden puts out an auction, people are paying attention. So, nice. so let me follow up on that real quick because uh, I don't mess with the high-end stuff all that much. Um, I am curious, though, like if I have a, a six-figure card, I'm going to Golden. But we have people reach out to us all the time through the Facebook group, through our socials. Hey, I have this card. How should I sell it? I am curious from somebody on the inside, like at what level do you, obviously you want everything to sell on the platform. At what level though, what, what price, what entry point do you start telling guys you think Golden is the best um, the best avenue to sell as opposed to an eBay or something else? 
I mean, if you have at least a five figure card, hundred percent, like go to gold. And we, we sell many things under that price. So I don't want you to just think like, oh, well, you know, it's only go for like several hundred bucks. So I'm not going to go to golden. Like we do. Mm -hmm. But the reason I say five figure card, like, like you, I don't mess with the high end stuff. Like I'm lucky to be in the same room with them sometimes. Like I see these high end cards and like memorabilia items. I'm like, this is crazy. But with golden, you know that there's this trust factor that you're not getting with eBay, right? Like you send something to eat or you're, you're, not, you're not even sending it. You, you're selling something on eBay. And like how many times you're going to get a message like, oh, sorry, my kid bit on that. Or <laughs> what do you mean to do that? Like that's not happening at golden. You know, it's like these people are vetted. Like there's payment information already on hand for when something is coming. You know, these items are always graded. You don't have to worry about like what if a thing is authentic or if something's real like there is this trust factor that you can't get on ebay that you get from golden yeah i'm actually glad you said that because that was always that's always my mark like word for word 10 grand or more of at least a well-known person if it's a very like obscure weird thing i go a little higher but anything ten thousand or more I, I feel like almost always golden's the route but i actually think as a buyer if you go under five grand you can get some real deals on golden like there are times when I, my buddies like we have a chat of about 16 of us like the uh, the cheaper stuff for sure, you can get some decent deals on. But yeah, five figures. I'm glad to hear you say that. I was I was curious on the insider's perspective. So Susan, I know we don't have you for a long time. Suze, that's my bad. That is my bad. Do you Suze. want me to edit that? Because Suze, um, well, last question for me. I'm just curious. Ever since you guys uh, joined the Collectors Universe universe uh have you seen benefits or what is there any differences in how golden goes about business or is there going to be availability for more auctions in the future uh smaller price items bigger things anything like that you know up until this point it's been very sort of separate you know we there is some synergy there you know like some of our designers or some things like that but i do think moving forward there might be more of that that will be seen and not just in the background mm -hmm. um because it's it's kind of cool to think that like here's this pretty big company like co collectors holding like there's this really huge company and you know we're a part of that so obviously the next is it a premiere what do you guys actually call the auction i mean your next auction ends in 19 days what's the title of this thing the spring golden elite oh that's not that's i don't good. like it yeah that's okay no it's a great name it's okay it's fine Sue's came up with that buddy we poured over this for hours <laughs> really next time call me i've got some thoughts no i am curious so the next one ends in 19 days five hours and 29 minutes in case you're wondering <laughs> Thank you. uh anything from the upcoming auction that kind of has caught your eye you, you're curious to see where it ends anything in that realm yeah, there's, I mean, the the Lionel Messi card, which is lot number one, I, I'm so intrigued to see where that card ends. I'm not a big soccer person, like I'll tell you, but like, you know, watching the soccer market and seeing it sort of flourish, I'm like so intrigued to see where, what this card actually does, because is it, is it going to set the record for an all-time soccer card? Yeah, maybe, you know, so I, I want to see if it does that. Um, and some of we the just other had items, our first million dollar soccer card, right? Didn't that just sell like last mm -hmm. month? Was it a Ronaldo? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So this could push yeah. a million, you think? I mean, maybe. That's what I was like. I, I'm intrigued. Like I said, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. And being lot number one, like, it's a pretty big deal at Golden. Like, the top, you know, when you, the way they set the order, like, that's a big deal. So it being lot number one means, like, you know, they have, they have, they expect big things from you. So don't let us down. You sure. Know, and the first card. card I saw, like, we're both on the site now. Literally the first card when you go to buy lot number one. So yeah. good um, placement. Okay. So anything else you're excited about in that in that auction? Yeah, and one of the other cool things, I mean, there's a mantle rookie and there's, you know, the 52 Bowman mantle, which yeah. that's pretty Whatever. crazy. Whatever. Who cares about that? By the All way, right. it was a Pele card that broke a million. Oh, just in case what did I say? Uh, Ronaldo. He also kicks a ball. We're fine. <laughs> They're all the same player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number, lot number seven is really cool. Um, it's a pair of Jordan sneakers from his rookie season. That he signed, and I just I don't know. I find I find I thought those, I think those are really cool. I think you know, it's for especially for like like sneakerheads, like like those are like the iconic Jordan sneakers. So I, I think those are those are really. Cool. What do you think is going to go for the most in the entire lot? Good question. I was look. I was actually looking at this earlier. I mean, probably the LeBron exquisite. You know, it'll it'll go. It'll break a million, if not get close to it. Um, I think that'll go for the most. Wow. I am curious. So the one that cheaper stuff, but there's some stuff that I just kind of find interesting anyways. I mean, obviously the Dominguez Super Fractor just sold out of Bowman, his original Bowman. But in this one, there's the Bowman's Best Super Fractor insert auto. It's a PSA 10. I just think that's a, I don't think it's that great of a, it's a sticker auto. Still an awesome card. I have a weird feeling that card's going to go for like $100,000 or something absolutely ridiculous. I, I kind of hope I'm wrong, but I would not be shocked. 
And then that gold Joe Burrow kaboom. Like, people go absolutely nuts yeah. for kabooms. It's a second year, but I'm still curious. And then just selfishly, there's a Kareem PSA 8 rookie. I think he's like the most undervalued guy. Him and Jim Brown, I always say, are the two cheapest guys for all-time greats. I'm very curious what the PSA 8 goes so for. There's a number of cards in this in this auction, then, it sounds like. It's not just all... It's not memorabilia heavy. Oh, yeah. How many how many items are there? Is that a set amount every time? No, it's different every auction. The elites usually have less because generally it's more like high-value items that will go in this. Mm -hmm. um, but this one has about 3,000 because there's also True. Um, our entire session three because, you know, they end on different days. So they'll end April 9th, 10th, and 11th. And session three is April 11th. And our entire session three is soccer cards. Um, it's this huge collect-in from collection from i want to say his name is damian rodrigo and if i get it wrong I oh yeah yeah we talked to him once yep yeah that's his that, that's his collection in session three. Oh wow. yeah ken was ken was with him at national as a matter of fact yeah. when that big security yeah. guard tried to stop us oh. and i had to let him know what was up dude with the earpiece <laughs> please um wow tony, yeah that's really really cool <laughs> just kidding tony if you're into soccer there you go ton of messy stuff like stickers brand new select stuff there's actually a bunch of it but yeah the last i don't know six pages of this thing that's a huge, so that's all his collection. Yeah, that's those are his cards. That's his messy collection. He was Sheesh. like, you know, he's the best messy collection in the world. And he has a lot of his stuff is up there now. Suze, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the inside info. So that is Susan, the head director, president of Golden. I think I got that's that title right. Correct title. Thank you for the promotion. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good deal. We'll catch all you guys right. next month. See ya. Golden hour, more like I don't know how golden you, girls. I don't know how you right. I don't know how you do that. Where you like you're just like talking to me in between like guys. Like, Go. <laughs> just, hey, uh, I want to sell. I want somebody in this. Studio I with think us Suze is a delight. I she was very knowledgeable. I, I would love Suze. to talk to her again when they've got something else coming up. That was really cool. All right. Um, all right. So last thing before Those are we four separate lots before it. we end the show, we wanted to update guys. <clears throat> so one of our biggest giveaways, we didn't really realize it was going to be value wise. Yeah. Crazy. Value wise, uh, not realizing it was going to be, but the zero cool cards have, if you're not checking eBay comps at this moment, maybe just see what for yourself, what they're doing. Um, at this point in time, the boxes themselves are going for around 15. 12 to 15 depending on where you're looking um there's some out there for twenty thousand dollars that are just buy it listed by it now and it would not surprise me if one sells for that the individual cards are selling and we have shown that they've been paid for some some of them there's definitely some shill crap going on sure but, but there some are have sold certainly some that are selling for a base even in the thousands of dollars yep so but you have to be careful there's a bunch of stuff that like zero bid history yeah, so I'm curious about it. With that being the case, um, we are excited that we have uh, four different lots of cards that we are giving away. Um, we've already kind of we've explained on past shows. We are going we do Mike. You're doing a live giveaway today on Facebook, right? Yes, you will miss it by so the time you watch this. By show. the time you watch this, you can go back and watch a, a review on uh, mm -hmm. on Facebook. That being said, a lot of really nice cards. Um, check them out, and hopefully, you'll win on the next one. Today, in fact, blockchain, drop in with comments. Take us out. You're doing so good. Just like end the show. Oh, you know what? Actually, before you do that, I'm glad you actually talked for a second. <laughs> Hold that breath in for another five minutes. I was a little bit wrong about this Jama rant. Although ours is not numbered, but it is the die cut. I don't know what's going on with the Spellbound card. It's not numbered, but it is the gold die cut. How are we editing this back into the other? You don't have to. Just leave it at the very end like this. Who cares about editing? Yeah, this, this card is actually worth, man, all these other ones say they're numbered. Ours is not. I'm very stupid. I'm not going to argue that point. I think we might have been all right. We'll update this next week. The job might be a big card. We're done. I've ruined the show. That's okay. Ruined everybody's day. I hope nobody ever watches this again. We're going to go ahead and cut that part. Cut that part, <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, so in going back through the cards while Jesse was yammering away and closing the show, whatever he does... I'm just trying to fill space while you're doing your thing. Just trying to keep us afloat. <laughs> so the John, nothing huge, but the John Morant Spellbound is the orange die cut. Actually looks like it's 20 to 30 bucks. Again, edges and stuff, I'm not going to grade it. Um, but yeah, another 20 or $30. Okay. We're going to be close to half our money back in this box, I bet. Which is not terrible considering we didn't hit anything crazy. So there you go. Now we're, we're done. We're a little Bye. less of losers. Bye. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.